The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. This sphere is moving between electrodes having a potential difference of about 25 kilovolts. It is immersed in a slightly conducting oil. The mechanism responsible for the bouncing motion is basic to the interaction of electric fields and moving media. The applied voltage induces charges on the electrodes and the contacting metallic sphere. By virtue of the charges on its surface, the sphere is attracted toward the upper plate. But as the sphere rises, the charge induced on its surface leaks off through the liquid. And eventually, gravity returns the sphere to the plate to renew the process. Once the sphere rises off the lower electrode, it can be completely enclosed by a surface S that's entirely in the liquid. If we call the net charge on the sphere Q, conservation of charge requires that the rate of change of Q be equal to the negative of the net current out of the sphere through the surrounding surface. If we model the liquid by an ohmic conductor having a conductivity sigma, the current density is proportional to sigma times the electric field intensity. If the conductivity of the liquid is uniform, then sigma can be taken outside the surface integral. If the permittivity of the fluid is also uniform, we can multiply E by epsilon inside the integral and divide by epsilon. Then, by Gauss's integral law, the surface integral is equal to the net charge on the sphere. And we have a differential equation for Q. Tau is the charge relaxation time, the permittivity divided by the conductivity. The solution of this equation shows that the charge decays exponentially with an effective RC time constant that is the charge relaxation time. This is the rate of decay regardless of the configuration and potentials of boundaries surrounding the particle. Our derivation makes evident the reason that the result is so general. The net current from the particle is proportional to the net charge on the particle regardless of what bounds the uniform material surrounding the particle. Suppose we reduce the fluid conductivity. Then the relaxation time is longer. Here we use corn oil with a relaxation time of about one second. Now we have transformer oil with a relaxation time of over 10 seconds. The sphere reaches the upper electrode long before the charges leak off. Upon contact, it acquires charges of the opposite polarity and is pulled downward by the electric field and gravity. The sidewise motion shows that now even charges on the wall are important.
The oscillations of the spheres provide an explanation of what we see if metal filings are placed between the electrodes. In corn oil, most of them lose their charge and fall back before reaching the top electrode. But in transformer oil, they stream between electrodes. Now, if we increase the voltage, the streaming particles cause electrical breakdown. Small particles in oil-insulated high-voltage equipment can similarly lead to disaster.